This video is sponsored by Geology, but I'll talk more about that later. Over the last several days, I've been putting Grok 3 through a series of tests to see just how impressive it really is. And in this video, I'm going to share some of those results. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Now, in case you haven't been paying attention, there have been really massive developments in AI over just really the last year or so. And XAI's Grok, their latest version, Grok 3, is really impressive and in many ways, it's outshining the competition. I plan to put out more than one video on this topic and I want this to be part one of a series showing the results from my testing of Grok. I had initially planned to make this all one video, but as I did various tests and decided on more and more topics, the video was just going to be way too long. So I decided to start with the literature and arts part, which is going to be what this video covers, my tests on literature and art. And for example, I had Grok write a song, I had Grok write a short story, etc. So creativity and also understanding of literature as well. I'll dive into those results. But make sure that you stay tuned to this channel. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure that you subscribe because I plan to, in a future video, go over the math, science and engineering, and possibly even more tests in a future video. One of the first results I wanna share is a song that Grok3 actually wrote at my request. But before I dive into that song, which you're not going to wanna miss, I'm going to play a clip of it. And I actually had it turned into an actual song with music with another AI tool based on the lyrics that Grok wrote. But before I dive into that, I recently partnered with Geology to bring you this sponsored video. To be honest, I've never really had much of a skincare routine, but as I get a little older, skincare is a little more important to me. So I'm glad to be implementing Geology products into my routine. So like for example, here um, is the Everyday Face Wash. I like that they actually give you two of these because one is for the shower that you can use when you wash your face in the morning and then the other is for um, nighttime washing. Then when it comes to moisturizing, they have their morning moisturizing cream and the moisturizing night cream. I've also been using the Moab Super Clean Body Wash that they sent me, and I really like the consistency of it. It doesn't take very much of this product and it lathers very nicely, and the scent is not overwhelmingly strong. It's just a nice, pleasant aroma. In addition, I do have a little bit of dark circles under my eyes. So they sent me this eye cream, which is their dark circle formula, which is going to hopefully help reduce those just a little bit. Now, one thing that I really liked too is in the package, it actually came with the instructions for a morning routine and for a night routine. And then it also came with this card, which talks about the ingredients in the various products. Geology has a number of products to help with your skincare needs. And if you wanna try it out yourself, use my link and code below to get 70% off your custom skincare starter set. That's a full month trial for only $12. Plus you get a free gift and up to 50% off add-ons. Trust me, your skin will thank you. When it comes to AI created art like a song, it's kind of controversial. With that being said, Grok3 did prove to me that I can actually write a pretty impressive song, at least the lyrics for a song. I asked Grok, can you write a pop song in Taylor Swift style about relationships that last? Please include three verses and a chorus. Very quickly, Grok3 responded back with the lyrics for a song it entitled Forever in the Frame. Then I took the lyrics that Grok wrote and I found another AI tool, makebestmusic.com, that allowed me to basically paste in the lyrics and describe what kind of song I wanted it to create. And it automatically added a vocalist and music to these lyrics. And here's an excerpt of that song. A love so alive, it's a story that swells. We're forever in the frame, caught in golden light through the floods and the flames. We hold on tight, every scar, every spark there are to claim. Hearts that last, love that last. Forever in the frame oh, We're never fading now No shadow of a doubt We're forever in the frame Ooh. The city lights call We chase the buzz apartment nights Coffee stains and dust You held my hand through the breakdowns and rain 
heard my name when I lost my refrain. The world spun fast, but we stayed in place. A Polaroid pinned in a cluttered space. Through every fight, every tear we mend. A thread unbroken, a vow to defend. I will link to the full song down below, but I was actually pretty impressed with these two tools combined. With Grok, it actually wrote some pretty decent lyrics that seem to make sense mostly. I mean, there's a word or two I might switch around or change, but overall, it makes a lot of sense. And the fact that the other AI tool was able to take just those lyrics and turn it into a pretty decent song, I'm really impressed. Another thing that Grok 3 is actually pretty good at, at least on an abstract side, when it comes to actually realistic images, sometimes it gets things kind of funny. But if you ask it to do more abstract art, it's really impressive. For example, previously in the thread, I had been asking Grok about FDR's presidency. So when I followed that up with a request to draw abstract art, the first of the photos that Grok drew depicted FDR with a cool abstract background, and I think it turned out really well. It's a cool picture. The second image it created was another man here with an abstract background. After seeing how well Grok did on abstract art, I asked Grok, how about an abstract Vincent Van Gogh style art piece depicting the night sky on a Mars settlement in the year 2100? Grok then created these two pieces of art, which I honestly think are incredible, especially that second one. Of course, it kind of looks like Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night, but with some Mars landscape background. But no matter what, when you look at these two images, this really is pretty impressive and shows a lot of creativity. With that being said, once again, I believe Grok does best drawing more abstract art or cartoony art, because if you ask for realistic art, you're often able to find really obvious AI mistakes, like words are really strange often when it comes to AI art. I've seen AI art sometimes add extra fingers to people's hands, etc., or faces that look a little weird, like human faces that don't quite look right. When you try to get AI art to be really realistic, it's not quite there in most cases, but Grok is doing really well here with creativity and in this abstract form, it's really impressive. I also asked Grok, please write a short story about what life will look like on Mars in the year 2100. However, the first response that Grok gave me sounded more like a description and less of a story. So I asked, can you make this more of a story and less of a description? Grok pretty quickly then responded with this particular short story, which once again, I'm going to let an AI voice read this short story. And this AI voice was created by Eleven Labs. But let me know what you think about the creativity in this short story. Lila kicked off her boots in the airlock of Dome 7, the faint hum of the recycling system buzzing in her ears as she shed her exosuit. At 12, she still delighted in Mars' low gravity, bounding toward the kitchen where her parents, Mira and Jackson, were already plating dinner. Hydroponic kale, lab-grown protein, and a single precious Martian tomato she'd helped cultivate that morning. Careful, Lila, Jackson called, his voice tinged with a chuckle as she nearly crashed into the smart glass wall, its surface shifting to reveal the rust-red Tharsis plateau outside, dotted with the soft glow of neighbouring biodomes under a pink dust-hazed sky. Got distracted by Phobos again, Lila admitted, peering at the smaller moon darting above the horizon. Tonight, though, her excitement dimmed as she overheard her parents' hushed argument, another council debate about water quotas. Mira, a terraforming engineer, slammed her tablet down, its hollow screen flickering with charts. They're cutting our ice mining again, Jackson. How are we supposed to breathe oxygen into this rock if we can't even hydrate the microbes? Jackson, a rover tech, sighed, running a hand through his graying hair. We'll stretch it like always, but if the storms hit like last year, we'll be scraping dust off the reactors for weeks. Lila slipped away, her neural implant pinging with a message from her friend Kai, meet at the VR pod for stargazing. She zipped through the dome's corridors, past families laughing under artificial sunlight, and scientists hunched over 3D models of future Martian cities. In the pod, Kai's avatar flickered beside hers, their virtual forms standing on a cliff overlooking a simulated Earth-like Mars, rivers glinting under green skies. Think we'll see it for real? Kai asked, his voice crackling through the neural link. 
Lila shrugged, her gaze fixed on the stars. Maybe, but I like our tomato better than some fake river. A week later, a dust storm engulfed Dome 7, darkening the skies and rattling the biodome's translucent walls. Lila watched from the observation deck, her breath fogging the glass as rovers stalled and solar arrays flickered. Jackson was out there, his exosuit's visor glowing faintly in the haze, battling to clear the panels. When he returned, exhausted, Mira wrapped him in a tight hug and Lila overheard her whisper, We'll make it. This rock's stubborn, but so are we. That night, Lila lay awake, the red blues creeping in, the melancholy of endless ochre and isolation. But she clutched her tomato, its earthy scent grounding her. One evening, as Phobos and Deimos shone bright, Lila joined the dome's communal gathering, where a hollow screen projected her great-grandmother's memories from Earth. Fields of corn, blue skies, laughter on a porch swing. The colony's psychologist, Dr. Nia, stood beside her, noting the quiet hope in the crowd. We're building something here, she told Lila. It's slow, but every tomato, every cleared storm brings us closer to home. Lila nodded, imagining the day Mars might bloom green, her heart swelling with a mix of longing for Earth and pride in this rugged, red world they were shaping, one leap at a time. On the topic of creativity, I thought, why not ask Grok to write a poem? So I asked Grok to write a poem about solar panels that was witty and funny. Grok pretty quickly responded with a poem entitled Sunbeam Schemers, and I'm going to let AI read it, AI created by Eleven Labs, because I think that's appropriate once again to let AI read a poem created by AI. Oh, solar panels, shiny and sleek, perched on rooftops, playing hide and seek. You soak up the sun like a beach bum on sand, but when clouds roll in, you just sulk and disband. Charge me up, baby, I'm green and I'm grand. You hum to the photons in your silent command. But on rainy days, you're a moody old sage, whispering, where's my spotlight? I'm stuck in this cage. You're the nerds of the grid, all logic and math, turning sunshine to watts in a kilowatt bath. But beware the squirrel who thinks you're a stage. One wrong dance move and it's a blackout rampage. Eco-warriors cheer. You're saving the earth. While I trip on your wires, cursing your worth. You dream of a world where fossil fuels flee. But for now, you just blush when the sun winks at thee. So here's to you, panels both brilliant and bright, harnessing daylight with all of your might. Keep beaming, keep glowing, don't ever retire. Just don't fry my brain when I'm stuck in the wire. Now, there are a few lines in that poem that don't make perfect sense, like, for example, especially that last one, but don't fry my brain when I'm stuck in the wire. Um, I don't know exactly what that's supposed to mean there. That's kind of odd. But overall, there's a lot of creativity here and... You know, you could probably query Grok to write a series of poems and maybe maybe two or three out of 10 would be pretty decent and maybe a few are going to be bad. But with that being said, when a human writes poems, often it's the same way. I mean, they a human will create a series of poems and only the best really get shown to the world. So, you know, this doesn't mean that Grok is bad at writing poems. I think this is actually pretty decent. With that being said, do let me know in the comment section below what you think about Grok's poem here. Now, one incredible use of AI is to use it to summarize longer pieces of work. For example, I asked Grok 3 to summarize the fiction book, The Giver by Lois Lowry, and I did ask specifically here in five sentences or less. And I thought this description was pretty accurate, but with that being said, I'm going to read this description that Grok gave, a summary of the book, and if you've read The Giver, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you think this is an accurate portrayal of The Giver? In Lois Lowry's The Giver, Jonas lives in a seemingly perfect, controlled society where pain, choice, and individuality are eliminated and memories of the past are held by a single receiver. At 12, Jonas is selected as the new receiver, trained by The Giver to receive memories of joy, sorrow, and true human experiences, revealing the cost of his society's sameness. As Jonas learns the truth, including the existence of euthanasia for those deemed unfit, he becomes determined, 
to restore freedom and emotion to his community. He escapes with a baby named Gabriel, pursued by search planes and journeys toward the unknown, hoping to release the memories and liberate his people. The novel ends ambiguously, leaving the readers to ponder whether Jonas and Gabriel find safety or perish in the snow, symbolizing hope and the struggle for a meaningful life. I also asked Grok to summarize a non-fiction book, a book that I'm actually listening to right now, and that book is Atomic Habits by James Clear. Here's Grok's summary of that book. In Atomic Habits, James Clear explores how small incremental changes can lead to significant life improvements through the power of habits. He introduces the concept of the 1% better approach, emphasizing that tiny habits, when compounded over time, create remarkable results. Clear outlines a four-step model, cue, craving, response, reward, to understand and modify habits, and offer practical strategies like habit stacking and environmental design to make good habits easier and bad habits harder. He stresses the importance of identity-based habits, where you focus on becoming the type of person who aligns with your goals rather than just achieving outcomes. The book combines scientific research with actionable advice, encouraging readers to embrace the process of continuous improvement for lasting change. While reading a summary is no replacement for reading the book, I believe that summary is very helpful and I really like the language used. It's, it's really naturally written and I like Grok's style when it comes to writing. That particular summary was very well written. With that being said, I believe Grok has shown that it can be pretty creative when it comes to art and literature. But what about understanding human literature? Can Grok 3 actually analyze various texts and understand the meaning of those texts? Well, in order to determine that, I actually found a 10 question sample college level exam on analyzing and interpreting literature. And this was a free example test on examiam.com. And I asked Grok 3 the 10 questions in this test, which included an excerpt from a piece of literature, and then it asked questions about specific passages, and Grok was able to get nine of the 10 questions correct, so a score of 90%. Not too bad, especially because this shows pretty good understanding of the written text here, and I think this is actually a pretty impressive result by Grok in this particular test. Now make sure that you stay tuned. Once again, I plan to do another video in this series to test Grok on math, science, and engineering and topics like that. But when it comes to literature and creativity, Grok 3 does pretty darn well. But with that being said, were you also impressed with the results that I showed here? Let me know in the comments section below. I'd also like to say thank you to Geology for partnering with me and sponsoring this video. Be sure to visit the Geology website using the link in the video description and take advantage of the 70% off personalized skincare trial. Also, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.